There's a big world out there, different people, cultures, and languages you've never heard a thing about. But don't worry, you'll discover some today in this video. However, there's a twist. Here are 20 of the scariest tribes you don't want to meet. Mercy Tribe Wait till you hear this, because the genes of this tribe carry DNA of a third unknown human species. The Mercy people are a fascinating ethnic group living in Ethiopia, known for their distinctive lip plates and stick-fighting rituals. Outsiders may find these practices strange, but to the Mercy, they're an important part of their culture and traditions. The lip plates in particular are a source of both wonder and confusion. Tourists often ask how the Mercy women manage to eat or drink with these large discs in their mouths. Some even speculate that they have developed special techniques, like sipping soup through a straw or using chopsticks to eat rice. But the truth is, the Mercy are just like anyone else when it comes to eating and drinking. They simply remove the plates temporarily. As for the stick fighting, it may look like a brutal form of combat, but it's actually a way for young men to demonstrate their bravery and prowess. The winner is hailed as a hero, while the loser is left with a few bruises and a bruised ego. It's kind of like a medieval version of Rocky, minus the boxing gloves. Another curious aspect of Mercy culture is their unique greeting, which involves spitting on their hands before shaking. This may seem gross to outsiders, but it's actually a sign of respect and friendship. It's also a way of warding off evil spirits, as saliva is believed to have protective properties. While the Mercy people may have some unconventional practices, they're a proud and resilient community with a rich cultural heritage. And who knows, maybe one day we'll all be wearing lip plates and spitting on our hands as a sign of respect. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. No, these are not characters from Apocalypto. Characters in the movie don't even look this strange. It seems like the genes of this tribe carry the DNA of a third unknown human species. Who are these guys? And where are they taking the lady? It looks like some kind of ritual is about to happen. With the guys covered in black paint, leaves wrapped around their waists, and wigs on their heads. Wigs? Can we even call those wigs? The girl is tied to a bamboo stick, and they appear to be in a forest, journeying somewhere. This is just one big puzzle, and if you think we have the answers, you're wrong. We're hoping you could help figure out what this tribe is and what in the world is happening here. So tell us, what do you think these men are? What crime do you think this lady committed? Or is she some sort of elite member whose guards are transporting around? Okay, that sounds ridiculous. Anyway, tell us what you think in the comments and don't forget to use the hashtag Sweet Topic. Awa Tribe of Brazil The Awa people of Brazil are known for their strong commitment to protecting their land from encroaching loggers and outsiders. These forest-dwelling people have long been able to live independently and sustainably relying on hunting and gathering as their primary source of sustenance. Of course, this doesn't stop outsiders from trying to take advantage of the Awa's land. Some have even described the Awa as uncontacted, despite the fact that they have long been engaged in trade with neighboring tribes and have had limited interactions with outsiders. Despite the challenges they face, the Awa have managed to maintain their way of life and their connection to the land. They've also been the subject of documentaries and news reports, which have helped to raise awareness about their plight. But let's be honest, the Awa probably don't need anyone to raise awareness for them. They've proven themselves to be fiercely independent and able to protect their land on their own. And if anyone tries to mess with them, they're not afraid to show their teeth, literally. So let's all take a page from the Awa's book and stand up for what we believe in. And if anyone tries to mess with us, we'll just bare our teeth and show them who's boss. Akunsu Tribe The Akunsu Tribe may be a small and remote community in the Amazon, but they sure know how to party. These indigenous people have been known to celebrate their victories over wild animals with a good old-fashioned dance-off. And let's be real, who hasn't felt the urge to bust a move after conquering a pesky insect or two? But don't let their festive spirits fool you. The Akutsu have faced their fair share of challenges, including threats from illegal loggers encroaching on their land. Yet, despite these obstacles, they've managed to hold on to their cultural traditions and maintain their way of life. Maybe their secret lies in the power of dance. And while they may be a bit more isolated than your average city dweller, the Akutsu have some serious skills when it comes to making their own tools and equipment. Need a new hunting spear? 
No problem. They can fashion one of wood and bamboo in no time. It's like a DIY project on steroids. So next time you're feeling overwhelmed by the hustle and bustle of modern life, take a page from the Ankunsu's book and dance your troubles away. And if all else fails, you'll remember that you can always fashion your own hunting spear out of a stick and some determination. Mudmen Tribe The Asoro Mudmen, a tribe in Papua New Guinea, are known for their unique mud masks and frightening appearance. Legend has it that they would cover themselves in mud to scare their enemies, but now they mainly use it for cultural events and tourism. Tourists flock to see the mudmen perform their dance, which involves shaking their bamboo sticks and shaking their heads while wearing their distinctive masks. However, some visitors are not prepared for the sight of these mud-covered warriors and run away in fear. The Asaro mudmen take their appearance seriously and will only wear their masks for special occasions. They've even been known to keep their masks on during a rainstorm, even though it makes it difficult to see. Rumors abound that some mud men have begun to use makeup instead of mud, but purists insist that nothing can compare to the real thing. One tourist reported that she saw a mud man pull out a compact mirror and start applying foundation to his mud-covered face. Whether this is true or not remains to be seen. Despite their fearsome appearance, the mud men are known for their friendly nature and hospitality. Visitors are often invited into their homes for traditional meals and to learn more about their culture. Just be sure to keep your distance if they start pulling out their mud masks. Palawan The Palawan people are an indigenous group from the Palawan Islands in the Philippines. These folks are known for their incredible skills in fishing and hunting. They're also known for their love of music, which they express through their traditional dances and instruments. Legend has it that the Palawan people descended from the sky, making them the original aliens. Although their story is fascinating, it's tough to believe that aliens from the sky could have such amazing fishing skills. Their traditional dress is a sight to see as they wear colorful clothing made from local materials like palm leaves and bamboo. Some Palawan people even wear traditional loincloths, which definitely turn up the heat in the tropical climate. The Palawan people also have a rich cultural heritage with many traditional practices and beliefs still practiced today. One belief is that they should always treat nature with respect, which is why they have a deep connection to the land and sea. They may be known for their love of seafood. The Palawan people have a surprising distaste for the coconut crab. These crabs can weigh up to four kilograms and are considered a delicacy in many parts of the world, but the Palawan people just can't stomach them. Perhaps they prefer to stick to their delicious fish diets. The Palawan people are a fascinating group with a unique culture and history. They prove that even aliens can have impressive fishing skills and fashion sense. Cargo Cult Tribe The 0191 cargo plane is a remarkable aircraft used by the Air and Space Forces. It can carry up to 15,000 pounds of cargo and has a range of over 1,000 miles. But to the Palawan people, it might as well be a mythical beast from the heavens. The Palawan people have long been fascinated by cargo planes leading them to develop a unique cult around them. Their beliefs are based on the idea that the planes are carrying treasures and gifts from the gods, which they call cargo. They believe that if they perform certain rituals, the planes will come down and deliver the cargo to them. Of course, this belief has led to some interesting encounters between the Palawan people and cargo planes. One time, a group of Palawan men dressed up in military uniforms tried to flag down a passing cargo plane convinced that it was carrying cargo for them. When the plane didn't stop, they were disappointed but not deterred. They continued to perform their rituals and hope for the arrival of cargo in the future. The cargo cult has become a significant part of the Palawan people's culture and even their economy. They sell handmade trinkets and souvenirs to tourists, claiming that they're made from the cargo that the planes have brought them. Of course, most tourists know better, but it's all in good fun. As for the 0191 cargo plane, it probably has no idea of the legend it spawned. It's just doing its job, delivering supplies and equipment to those who need it. But who knows, maybe one day it will deliver something special to the Palawan people and fulfill their cargo coat dreams. Karubo Tribe The Karubo people, also known as clubbers, are a group of indigenous people in Brazil. Their name comes from their use of wooden clubs for self-defense, hunting, and even as musical instruments. Don't mess with these guys, or you might just end up with a serious headache. Despite their fierce reputation, the Karubo people have a unique way of life that's fascinated anthropologists and adventurers for decades. 
They live in relative isolation in the Amazon rainforest, with little contact with the outside world. Some have even referred to them as an uncontacted tribe, although they have limited contact with outsiders over the years. The Karubo people have had their own language, customs, and traditions, which includes painting their bodies with bright colors and using body piercings as a form of decoration. They also have a reputation for being skilled hunters and gatherers, and for their love of honey, which they gather from wild bees in the forest. Maybe they're on to something. After all, honey is nature's original sweetener. While their way of life may seem primitive to some, they've managed to thrive in the harsh and unforgiving environment of the Amazon rainforest. They have a deep respect for their natural world and understand its rhythms and patterns in a way that few outsiders can comprehend. Who needs technology and modern conveniences when you've got the beauty of the rainforest at your fingertips? While the Karubo people may be known for their fierce reputation as clubbers, they're also a fascinating and unique group of people with their own language, customs, and traditions. Their ability to live in harmony with the natural world is something that many could learn from. Just be sure to stay on their good side, or you might just find yourself on the receiving end of one of those wooden clubs. North Sentinel Island Tribe There's not many jokes we can make about the Sentinelese because an uncontacted tribe living on a remote island in the Indian Ocean have managed to maintain their isolation for centuries. And who can blame them? With modern society's obsession with social media and TikTok dances, they probably saw no reason to welcome outsiders into their tribe. According to reports, the Sinhalese are fiercely protective of their land and culture, often attacking anyone who dares to approach their island. Some have even dubbed them the world's most dangerous tribe. But let's be real, who wouldn't be a little hostile if a bunch of strangers just showed up unannounced at their doorstep? Despite their isolation, the Sinhalese have managed to survive and thrive on their island hunting and gathering in traditional ways. With the way things are going in the world right now, they might just be the ones with the last laugh. Sure, they might not have iPhones or Netflix, but they also don't have to deal with traffic, taxes, or that one annoying co-worker who never stops talking. Maybe they're on to something, and we should all take a page out of their book and start living a simpler life. In any case, it's clear that the Sinhalese have made their choice to remain uncontacted, and we should respect that. Maybe we can all learn a thing or two from them and strive to protect and preserve our own cultures and traditions. Or maybe we should all just move to their island and join their tribe. It's worth a shot, right? Cuyareño people The Masco Piro tribe, also known as the Cuyareño tribe, is an indigenous group that lives in the jungles of Peru. They've gained notoriety for their reluctance to interact with outsiders, which has led to some tense and even violent encounters. They're a relatively small tribe and have managed to attract a lot of attention from the outside world. It's not entirely clear why they're so averse to contact, but some have speculated that it's because they're afraid of being exploited or harmed by outsiders. Of course, this hasn't stopped adventurous tourists and researchers from attempting to make contact with them. Unfortunately, these attempts have often been met with hostility, with some members firing arrows at outsiders or throwing rocks at their boats. They may have a reclusive nature but they are believed to have a rich cultural heritage. They are known for their intricate beadwork, which they use to adorn their clothing and accessories. They also have a unique style of music, which features a mix of traditional instruments and vocals. Overall, they are a fascinating group with a complex history and culture. While their reluctance to interact with outsiders may be frustrating for some, it's important to respect their wishes and allow them to live on their own terms. San Bushmen the San people, also known as the Bushmen, are one of the oldest indigenous groups in southern Africa. But they're definitely not AARP members. They have a rich cultural heritage and a unique way of life that's been threatened by modernization and encroachment on their ancestral lands. Despite their struggles, they have remained resilient and continue to maintain their traditional hunter-gatherer's lifestyle. They're skilled at tracking and using natural resources such as plants and animals for their survival. One of the most fascinating aspects of San culture is their language. They speak a number of click languages that are unlike any other in the world. It's like listening to a group of people speaking in Morse code. Their nomadic lifestyle and close relationship with nature has also led to a deep spiritual connection with the environment. They believe in a complex system of deities and spirits and use dance and trance-like states to communicate with them. Sadly, they faced many challenges over the years, including forced relocation, discrimination, and the loss of their traditional lands. 
many have been forced to abandon their way of life and assimilate into modern society. Despite these challenges, they continue to fight for their rights and the preservation of their culture. They have a rich history and a unique way of life that deserves to be celebrated and protected for generations to come. Dogon Tribe The Dogon people are a fascinating tribe located in Mali, known for their rich cultural traditions and unique customs. They've been studied extensively by anthropologists and scientists, but still, there are many mysteries surrounding their way of life. One of the most interesting aspects of Dogon culture is their mythology, which features the Namo, a group of amphibious deities that were said to have brought knowledge and wisdom to the people. They are depicted as having fish-like tails, and many scholars have suggested that they may be based on early encounters with mermaids. Yeah, you heard that right. Despite their advanced knowledge of astronomy and cosmology, these people still rely on traditional methods for farming and hunting. This has led to some interesting developments, such as the use of singing to call animals during hunting trips. One anthropologist who studied the Dogon even claimed to have witnessed a group of hunters sing a deer to death. They're known for their unique masks and other artistic creations. Some of these masks are used in religious ceremonies, while others are made simply for aesthetic purposes. One particularly striking example is the Kanaga mask, which is thought to represent a bird or an airplane. Overall, they're a fascinating and enigmatic tribe with a rich cultural heritage. While much has been written about them, there's still much to be learned about their traditions and way of life. And who knows, maybe one day we'll discover the true meaning behind their mysterious myths and legends. The Tigeri the Tigeri are a group of uncontacted indigenous people living in the Ecuadorian Amazon rainforest. And while their story may seem serious and concerning, let's take a lighthearted approach. First off, we have to give the Tigeri props for being able to remain uncontacted in today's world. It's like they have their own version of the bat cave hidden deep in the Amazon rainforest. Can you imagine being able to avoid modern technology and the internet? They're probably living their best life without all those distractions. Secondly, the Tigeri have taken social distancing to a whole new level. They're not interested in having visitors or making new friends. And honestly, can we blame them? After all, they're probably thinking, we've been here for centuries without anyone bothering us. Why start now? The Tigeri's nomadic lifestyle is also something to admire. They're like the ultimate backpackers, but without the Instagram photos and annoying travel blogs. They're out there living their best life, exploring the jungle and not worrying about rent, bills, or jobs. Talk about life goals. Lastly, they've something that many of us modern humans lack, a strong connection to nature. They have an intimate understanding of their environment, from which plants to use for medicine to where to find food and water. They don't need to rely on grocery stores or Amazon Prime, and they're probably laughing at all of us rushing to stock up on toilet paper during a pandemic. While their situation may be serious and concerning, let's take a lighthearted approach and appreciate their ability to live a simple nomadic lifestyle in harmony with nature. The Taro Manani The Taro Manani people, also known as the people from within in the Waroni language, are an indigenous tribe living in the Ecuadorian Amazon. While their way of life is no laughing matter, there are some interesting and amusing aspects to their culture that can be explored. For starters, they're known for their exceptional hunting skills. They use blowguns and poison-tipped darts to take down their prey, including wild pigs and monkeys. But their favorite target? Apparently, it's the white man. Yeah, you heard that right. They have been known to attack and kill outsiders who venture into their territory. It's not clear why they have such a strong aversion to outsiders, but one can't help but chuckle at the irony of a tribe that's fiercely protective of their way of life. In addition to their hunting prowess, they are also known for their unique language. Linguists have studied the language and found that it contains a large number of sounds that are not found in any other language in the world. It's a fascinating aspect of their culture that adds to their mystique. Despite their reputation as fierce protectors of their land and people, they're not without their quirks. They've been known to engage in a form of swapping with other tribes in the region, where they exchange goods and services with each other. And while they may not have access to modern technology, they have developed their own form of communication using drums and other instruments. These people are pretty fascinating and enigmatic. Their rich culture and history and their way of life may not be for everyone. It's hard not to admire their fierce independence and unique customs. Asmat people The Asmat people are a tribe in Papa, Indonesia that are known for their intricate wood carvings and unique culture. While they may be considered primitive by some, 
their artistic abilities are truly impressive. One thing to note about the Azmat people is that they're quite skilled in the art of headhunting. Don't worry though, they don't practice this anymore, but it's interesting to think about what their trophy room might have looked like back in the day. Another interesting fact is that they believe in the power of the spirits. In fact, they're so devoted to their spiritual beliefs that they've been known to hold feasts for their ancestors. It's like a family reunion, but with more ghosts. One thing you should know before visiting is that they have a unique greeting ritual. When you arrive, they may perform a dance that involves sticking their tongues out at you. Don't worry, they're not being rude, it's just a way to show respect. If you're looking to purchase some authentic hazmat artwork, you'll be pleased to know that the tribe is happy to oblige. Just be sure to negotiate a fair price. These guys are talented, but they're not above haggling. Overall, the Azmat people are a fascinating and friendly tribe that would make for a unique cultural experience. Just be prepared for them to have their tongue stuck out at you upon arrival. Tanuru Tribe Is it a tribe or is it a man? The man of the whole, also known as the last of his tribe, is a mysterious figure that's captured the world's attention. He's a member of an uncontacted tribe in the Amazon rainforest, known for his habit of digging holes and covering them with leaves. While this might not sound very impressive, the man of the hole's holes are deep and complex, leading many to speculate about their purpose. Despite numerous attempts to make contact with him, the man of the hole has remained elusive, avoiding all attempts to be captured or communicated with. Some experts believe that he's the last surviving member of his tribe, while others think that there may be others like him still living in the rainforest. Despite the mystery surrounding him, the man of the hole has become somewhat of a pop culture icon with people all over the world fascinated by his strange habits and elusive nature. Some have even speculated that he may hold the key to unlocking the secrets of the rainforest, while others have simply enjoyed following his exploits from afar. In the end, the man of the hole remains a mystery, a symbol of the unknown and unexplored, but perhaps it's part of his charm, as people continue to be captivated by his strange ways and enigmatic nature. This one was pretty confusing if you ask us. Chukchi Tribe the Chukchi people are a fascinating group of indigenous people living in the far northeast of Russia. They have a unique culture and way of life that's been shaped by the harsh Arctic climate and their interactions with neighboring tribes. They're not like everyone else. Trust us. One of the most interesting things about these people is their religion. They have a complex belief system that centers around animism, the idea that everything in the world has a spirit. This means that even everyday objects like rocks and trees are considered to be alive and have their own unique personalities. It's like living in a fantasy novel. The Chuchki people also have a great sense of humor. They love to tell jokes and play pranks on each other, especially during the long winter months when they're cooped up inside their yarangas, traditional tents. One of their favorite jokes is to pretend to be a snowdrift and surprise their friends and family when they walk by. Despite their isolation from the rest of the world, the Chuchki people have a deep respect for nature and the environment. They're skilled hunters and fishermen, and they use every part of the animals they catch. They're also excellent craftsmen and women, creating beautiful carvings and intricate beadwork. In short, they're a lively and resilient group with a rich culture and a great sense of humor. They remind us, even in the most inhospitable of environments, humans can thrive and find joy in the world around them. Mokin. The Mokin people, also known as the Sea Gypsies, have been living their best lives in Southeast Asia for centuries. These maritime nomads have a unique culture that revolves around the sea, and they're skilled in free diving and fishing. They have no written language, and their knowledge is passed down from generation to generation through oral traditions. These Sea Gypsies are known for their exceptional underwater skills, and they can dive to depths of up to 70 meters without using any breathing apparatus. They can hold their breath for several minutes, and they use their skills to catch fish, sea cucumbers, and other marine life. They have a deep respect for the ocean and believe that they are a part of it. The Mokin people live on boats called Kabang, and they move around the islands in the Andaman Sea. They have a carefree lifestyle and are always ready to welcome new experiences. They're also known for their love of music, dancing, and storytelling. The Mokin people have faced challenges from modernization and tourism, but they've managed to preserve their culture and way of life. They continue to adapt to changing times while maintaining their traditions. So if you ever find yourself in Southeast Asia and come across the Mokin people, be sure to embrace their way of life and join them in their underwater adventures. Just don't forget to bring your swimwear and a sense of adventure. Warani Tribe 
The Warani people, also known as the Warani or Wadini, are an indigenous tribe that live in the Amazonian rainforest of Ecuador. Their name means human beings or people, but some outsiders might say they're more like Tarzan than humans. Why? Well, they live in harmony with the jungle, swinging from trees like monkeys and are known for their hunting and gathering skills. They're famous for their use of blowguns, which they use to hunt animals like monkeys and birds. Their weapons are made from the long stems of a type of bamboo that grows in the jungle, and their dexterity with the blowgun is truly impressive. It's like they're playing a game of darts with nature, and they always win. But don't let their skills fool you. They may look like they belong in a National Geographic magazine, but they're also fierce protectors of their land and their way of life. They've successfully resisted outside interference and exploitation, even in the face of oil companies and missionaries. And they've maintained their traditional beliefs and customs despite attempts to convert them to Christianity, but even in isolation from the modern world. They're not backward or primitive. They have a deep understanding of the natural world around them and have developed a unique relationship with the rainforest. They're true guardians of the jungle, and their knowledge of the plants and animals is a treasure trove of information that could benefit all of humanity. The Warani people may seem like Tarzan, but they're more like jungle superheroes. They're brave, resilient, and fiercely committed to protecting their way of life. Maasai Tribe The Maasai people are a semi-nomadic tribe located in East Africa. They're well known for their distinctive dress, which often consists of bright red shukas wrapped around their bodies as well as their skill in jumping competitions. But did you know that the Maasai people have a unique way of greeting each other? Instead of a simple hello, they spit on their hands and shake. No need for hand sanitizer here. Another interesting fact is that they have a strong connection to their cattle, which are considered a symbol of wealth and status. In fact, Young Maasai men must prove their manhood by performing a ritual where they steal a cow from a rival tribe. Move over, cattle rustlers! The Maasai also have a fascinating traditional diet, which consists mainly of milk, meat, and blood. Yeah, blood. During special occasions, such as weddings and ceremonies, they'll mix cow blood with milk to create a fermented beverage that's considered a delicacy. Who needs wine when you can have cow's blood? And let's not forget about the Maasai's jumping skills. In their jumping competitions, known as Adumu, young Maasai men will jump as high as they can while maintaining a straight posture. The one who jumps the highest wins the competition and earns the respect of the tribe. Move over, LeBron James! They may be known for their distinct culture, but they also have some fascinating and quirky traditions that make them stand out. From spitting on hands to drinking cow's blood, they're truly a one-of-a-kind tribe. Chimbu Skeleton Tribe The Chimbu people of Papua New Guinea are a fascinating group, known for their elaborate traditional dress and unique cultural practices. But don't let their serious faces fool you. They also have a great sense of humor. One of the most notable things about the Chimbu people is their love of dancing. They have a wide variety of dances, from war dances to courtship dances, and they take them very seriously. But if you watch them in the right mood, they might just break out into a silly dance or two. Another thing that sets the Chimbu people apart is their love of pigs. Pigs are considered a sign of wealth and prestige, and they'll often hold elaborate pig feasts to celebrate important events. But don't worry, they don't eat their beloved pigs all the time. They also enjoy a wide variety of fruits, vegetables, and other meats. If you ever have the chance to visit the Chimbu people, be sure to try their traditional drink, Kamul. It's made from fermented sweet potato and is surprisingly tasty. But be warned, it's also quite potent. They're a warm and welcoming community with a rich cultural heritage. Whether they're performing their traditional dances or sharing a laugh over a drink, they know how to have a good time. So if you're ever feeling down, just remember the Chimbu people and their infectious joy for life.